Hi, welcome to the Social Good Podcast, a podcast to share stories, have fun, inspire others and increase impact. Grow a tribe and not stress about how many likes your friends give you on social media. I'm Rhys Morgan. Joanne Shalom is the founder of Sociability Care, community interest company. This is an award-winning training and consultancy social enterprise. Joanne has over 15 years of experience of working within the disability and mental health sector to support health and social care providers to ensure they're compliant with their regulators, the CQC or the Care Quality Commission. Social Good Podcast is powered by Clumsy Goat Coffee Beans Fair Traded Coffee from all over the world. I prefer the Ethiopian beans, but you can try a whole variety of tastes. And if you use our link, socialgoodpodcast.com forward slash coffee, you can get 10% off your first order. And for other ways to support Social Good Podcast, for example, please think about joining our Facebook group. Go to our website, socialgoodpodcast.com, which also has the show notes. I met Joanne through social media. Then in real life, we were both on one of the Midlands cohorts of the School of Social Enterprise in 2016-17. Welcome. Joanne. I'm Jo, the founder of Sociability Care, which is a community interest company. Um, and I created Sociability Care. The idea first began in July 2015 um, after the birth of my boys. Um, Noah and Oscar were born at 25 weeks and um, as a result of their prematurity, our little Oscar, Noah only lived for 30 hours. He was born with an additional heart complication um, and it was all just too much for him. Um, and so after 30 hours we were told we needed to hold him to say goodbye. Um, so I don't think we ever expected, even though how early there was expected, that things could go just so drastically wrong. Um, after that, we lived, Oscar then spent 12 weeks in intensive care within the hospital at Birmingham Women's Hospital. For those 12 weeks, we just lived in constant fear and anxiety that Oscar also wouldn't make it home. Uh, on day three of his life, Oscar suffered a stroke, which has led to him having cerebral palsy. And I think sort of watching him fight for his life every single day and us begging him to survive made me sort of look at my life and realise that the career I'd, I'd, I'd created for myself I didn't no longer want to return to instead I wanted to use our experience and support other people. I'm very sort of passionate that I can't change what happened to us but I can use those experiences to support other people. So I decided to create an organisation called Sociability Care. Um, as I said, it's a social enterprise, so we support people challenged by disability and or prematurity. Um, and we see that through that very sort of free core project, ultimately. And um, one of those is a training and consultant service. So we go out to organisations and provide training around disability to create awareness. Um, another one is that we, a group, we run, an, run a group called Looking Forward, which is run in conjunction with Selwood Halls in Midlands. Um, and with that charity, we support individuals with disabilities and their family members who run a fortnightly support group. Individuals with disabilities and family members come along, we provide support, we provide signposting with their, on an emotional level, and, and, and that's been running for 12 months now. And then our newest project is called Noah Star, um, which was created in memory of my son. And this is a, the project that launched in October um, and we use a team of volunteers. Currently we have 10 active volunteers and we may provide support to the siblings of the siblings of the premature babies at the Birmingham Women's Hospital. Okay, um, so stop, the, stop there Joe. I lost, we lost something. It, it got very garbled. Okay. Um, so uh, go back to um, in October, so in, start now, so in October of this year, I, we started Noah Star and then okay. I'll edit it. Yep. So in October of this year, 2017, we launched our new service, Noah Star. Noah Star supports the siblings of the premature babies at the Birmingham Women's Hospital. Um, we have a team of volunteers working there. We've currently got 10 active volunteers and we've just recruited another 20 who will start in the new year. They support the siblings by providing one-to-one -one support or in a crash facility, engaging in play, 
and that allows the siblings to spend time away from the clinical environment and also allows mum and dad to spend time with their babies. It might allow mum to express milk for the baby. It might allow mum to hold her baby or the other child is being taken care, care of and relieves for that pressure, stress and guilt of um, having good care for more than one child when you've got a baby in intensive care. Another star sort of rapidly growing and we've also been involved in being on the unit and helping out holding babies and helping out with um, comforting babies during procedures and that again relieves some of the pressure off parents if they can't be there, also off the nurses and allows them to do their carry out their role while we support them on nursing tasks. Wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay. where, where do I start there? So you've got 10 volunteers already and 20 yes. lined up. I, I yes. think some of our uh, some of our listeners will be going, I could never do that. That is very much what I would have said um, even the start of this year um, when I had the idea for Never Star um, and I approached the hospital with the idea. And I sort of, as much as I wanted to do it up until the day before we launched, I did wonder what, what I was doing, how it's going to work. Um, but it's worked. And I think a lot of that is to do with social media, to be honest, in, with recruit and volunteers. Um, that's probably my main point of advertising um, and people spreading the word and people talking about the organisation and support volunteers from people who are quite lucky. And then I've delivered all the training for the volunteers. Obviously, we've done all the DBSs and the references. Um, so it's been very time-consuming, um, but actually really, really positive in regards to how well the service seems to be going at the moment. I was going to say, you are quite active on Facebook, aren't you? That, is that your main point, or do you use LinkedIn? Yeah, Facebook is definitely my main point. I started, um, again, probably around October, using Twitter more. Um, so I'm getting better on Twitter and then my plans for the new year are to move on to LinkedIn. But the LinkedIn will serve more of a purpose for my training and consultant side of the organisation because um, that will hopefully reach more corporates and reach more individuals to help them to buy our services to understand what disabilities are so we can create more awareness and sort of branch out into LinkedIn more in 2018. There's so much going on there, isn't there? Um, can, I, can I take you back to um, when you approach the hospital, when you approach, the, let's face it, the people who need to pay you so that you can pay your council tax and your rates and all, yeah. all the rest of it. Um, that, that means quite high-level conversations, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was quite surprised about how they were so open to the idea and I think it fits in they've got a, a model called family integrated care which basically we need their model is parents need to be more involved in their baby's care for a variety of research reasons such as helping the bonds in reducing the levels of stress and um, following on mental health for mum when they leave the hospital and she hasn't been involved with the baby a quicker discharge so there's loads of reasons why they want the family integrated care model but mum can't be involved with her baby and express milk if she's got another child such as a few year old to look after. So when I approached them with the idea of knowing story, it did fit in with their model of care. Um, but initially I thought I was approaching them with the idea to say, this is what you should do, go ahead and do it. But it turned out I approached them with the idea of this is what should happen and they said, yes, you do it. So uh, <laughs> it was a bit of a, oh, okay, great, yeah, I can do that. And because I've got the background and that's sort of, I've managed different services for children, it, it, I did have the skills ultimately to do it. Yeah, so scary. How did you overcome that? I think it, it was just a case of taking each meeting as it come. And I was very much up until the point that we launched. So if I'm honest, going to meetings, expecting them to say, oh, actually, no, 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 this isn't for us. This. And kind of, Big meeting, I'd, I'd prepare, I'd um, know what I wanted to say and attend, and they seemed to love everything I was presenting. Um, and then it's also using the skills and experience of people around you and, and, and getting them to support in that whatever way you can and sort of like minded people around and kind of sharing your worries and your challenges and recognising everybody has similar worries and challenges and about supporting each other. Um, 
and each t- sort of really taking, as I said before, each step, each day as it comes, and kind of thinking out what do we need to achieve today, where do we need to be, what do we need to do. When you were st- in my in the introductory episode um, of the podcast, I talk about. Um, the way different people start their businesses. So you have this idea. Who did you talk to first? Oh, when I wanted to start the business. Yeah. Um, I think to be honest, it was um, I think it was my husband Kevin, mainly because we were still when I had the idea of social media care. We Oscar was in neonates at the, at the women's hospital for twelve five weeks, and that was when I had the initial idea. So I think it was very much me bouncing ideas off him. And saying to him, "This is what I want to do. Could we do this? How how can we financially manage me not returning to a full time, well paid job? How how will that work? Where do I go? What do I do? And building it from there, and then searching on the internet. So while Oscar was sort of sleeping, and while I was sat in his room on my own day after day, for weeks, I'd sit there and search on my phone um, and and find different." different people that was doing different things and then it was the school of social entrepreneurs that really allowed me to sort of go actually this is what i'm going to do and i think i applied for that so i asked was came home from hospital in october 2015 i think by february 2016 i found the ssc and then um, applied to their program and and then that was sort of my launch pad to go here we are we can do this now so it was a, a combination of people along the way i think that's what i met and helped and brought the information together um initially that was family and friends yeah the family friends I, I think we met through meetup or you reached yeah. out you messaged me on meetup and then we had a coffee and, yeah. and then we kept in touch and you helped one of my projects and um yeah. i'm trying to return the favor after um, a long long time uh, by doing this but i think yeah our initial meetup i saw you on meetup and I ha- had this idea that I wanted to be a social enterprise community interest company, but I've not really seen any other organisations in the way there was, didn't know much about it. But then you was on Meetup and you was a community interest company. I was like, he's like me, he's the same. <laughs> and then, yeah, then we arranged to make the profit and then you helped me by kind of helping me work out what what I was within my organisation because I had a lot of barriers along the way that was a bit, it, it didn't seem to make sense, but they were stopping me jumping forward and moving forward so the fact that barrier when I met you was what am I in my organisation am I the CEO am I this am I that and we talked to you about you're the founder and I was like oh, yes I am and that that little thing there enabled me to go I am this is my organisation I'm the founder next step yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it, it, I suppose it, it, somebody told me, Reese, what you're doing and what everyone's doing is massive. It, it's yeah. like eating an elephant. So how do you eat an elephant? It's a little bit at a time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and and that's what we all learn. But the ideal sold on online and everywhere else on the media is, you know, you just put in a few hours every day in your spare time and then woof, you're yeah. living the millionaire's dream, whereas um, yeah. it's not like that, really. No. And I think, you know, I left full-time role to get sort of more balance with my job as such. Um, so I wasn't at work ridiculous hours. I was at home more with the boys. And that is working. I am at home more with the boys, but I really have to be tight with myself because it's so easy to get drawn into working every evening and every weekend because there's so much you want to do and there's so many opportunities and the thing, you know, you have to become an expert in marketing and fundraising and applying for grants and building a website and social media. That's never been my area of expertise. And so to learn all that and then to do it is, can be a real challenge um, and time consuming. And so you end up finding your time drawn into those areas and not doing what you love. You have to, I regularly sort of have to step back and remind myself what my goals are, what I'm good at, what I'm not good at. And ultimately, the amount of time I spend working on the business fitting around the boys um, and most weeks that works some weeks it doesn't but most weeks it works <laughs> you've had an amazing uh, 2017 um, tell us a bit tell us the best bits tell us the highlights yeah it has been it's been a fantastic yeah um, I think one of the highlights is we was awarded a grant from a woods for um, and that was for the National Lottery, and that was for just under £10,000. 
that allows us to employ our first member of staff. Um, so she's joined the team, um, Gemma, and she will be working for eight hours for us each week. And that provides a lot as a project coordinator. So that help, really helps us sort of recruitment of the volunteers um, with the sort of the admin side, measuring the impact for the sides that I just don't never have enough time to do. She'll, she takes that all on board. So she's on board now. So that's been fantastic. Scary to have your first member staff, but great. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that launching Nova Star was a huge positive. Um, actually, launching the project and, and sort of seeing the difference we make within the hospital, the parents and the carers, and gaining that feedback from the staff, the parents, the, the siblings has been fantastic as well. Um, and then, yeah, I won an award with... Um, uh, um, you were nominated for hundreds, as it seemed to be. You were always pictured in glamorous dresses and um, and Kevin yeah. on your arm and um, fingers crossed. Yeah, so, yeah, we were nominated for about uh, four awards last year, I believe, um, and then we won two. Yay! Um, so, yeah, so it was... Um, yeah, we won Networking Mommies. That was our first award that we won, and that was this year. Um, at the start of the year, that was really a positive to win our first award. Um, and then we won one more recently in Midlands Business Community Charity Community Awards, um, and that was for Ent- Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, so again, um, that was really positive to win. So yeah, it, it, it's really nice to sort of get the recognition and think, oh, the people think we do good. Other people believe in us, and that's I think that's really nice. It, it is. It's amazing. It's amazing. So next year, or th- this year as the episode goes out, 2018, what are the plans? Well, a lot. And again, this is where I need to, there's so much I want to do and I need to really sit down and decide what we're going to focus on. But my idea is very much around Noah Star to expand that. I think there's a massive gap in discharge. So when you, as a family, are discharged from the neonatal unit, a lot of people can believe your journey sort of ends and everything's perfect. It's not. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of there's a higher rate of her, mothers having postnatal depression. Um, more so if you've had a baby in, in, in the neonatal unit than not. Um, and there's the lack of services there. So there's issues of bereavement when parents are discharged. Um, there can be post traumatic stress disorder when parents are discharged in the neonatal unit. And there's still illness. So for example, with us with our Oscar. He's been in hospital about three, four times this year um, because he's got chronic lung disease based on his maturity. So we end up still in hospital, um, which means again we have to double the care of Ben, our uh, 11 year old now, um, and to ensure that someone is going to be looking after him. He still can get to school, he still gets his homework done, and we'll still make some pat lunch while we're rushing out the door with hospitalers <laughs> in an ambulance at times to the children's hospital. And there is no services there to support. Um, we're lucky. We've got a fantastic family and friends around us that help. Other families don't necessarily have that. So I'd love to develop no so that it supports people on discharge as well. So when they get discharged from hospital, our volunteers go into the home, access peer support from mum, um, make sure that she gets the right support if she's struggling, that she visits the doctor, she get, get, gains counselling also supports support to the siblings so maybe take them out so mum can focus on expressing milk or feeding her baby um mum maybe even get a rest or, or dad if he's gone back to work or mum's gone back to work whatever it's the family situation may be to provide that support in the home um primarily to the sibling but also to the whole family to just to give them support so i'd love to expand that service on discharge and that sort of, and there are star across other hospitals as well. At the, at the moment, we just see the women's hospital, but there's also the need at the children's hospital, as we've seen. When we've ended up in there, there is no support for the siblings still, and, and that then adds pressure to mum or dad, um, or both of them. So that's my real aim, and to enable us to do that is obtaining the right grants and fundraising. So we're hoping to do a couple of fundraising events in 2018. Um, and apply for some grants to help fund the project. And if people want to find out more about the fundraising and the grants and the donations and generally what you're up to, uh, what's the best way to find you online? Yeah, so we're, our website's currently under development, so it does exist, but it's, we've just got a landing page. Hopefully that will be rectified soon. So our website is www 
sociabilitycare.org or you can email me at joe.shellum sociabilitycare.org um, and yeah and we can be contacted those ways um, and as I said our website should be up in, at the start of the new year so hopefully by the time this episode goes out it'll be up online we will provide links to all yeah. all the projects and and uh, and we wish you all the best. Time has run out. Um, thank you so much, Joe, for joining us. Thank you for having um, us. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back to tell us how many grants you've won, how many yes. awards you've, be, you've, <laughs> you've won. Two's quite a high bar, really, for a new business. Yeah. It's an amazing story. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't seen Oscar for ages. Give him my best. He's such thank a you. cutie. Um <laughs> And I hope uh, his health improves and uh, or that it's manageable. Yes. Um, yeah. it, I think that's what we can hope for in sort of October to April is the, the flu season. It's when prem babies get ill. So we're just hoping for manageable. And then April will fly. Excellent. I get, I'll try and catch up with you soon in real life. Uh, thank you so much again, Joe. Thank you. Cool. Lovely. But it was that okay? Yeah, fantastic. It's quite scary when you find I love how you ask the question. It's such a natural. <laughs> I do feel I, I do really love doing it. Yeah. Um and and when I think back, I thought, why didn't I do this ages ago? Because when I was little, uh, my mum used to uh do a radio program on local Welsh language local radio BBC okay. and we were we were if this was the early 1970s and I was I'm the eldest of three boys and we're all under six years old so we're real bloody handful um yeah. dad's got a high stress job mum's really busy uh, and the program used to be recorded on Saturdays, uh, Saturday yeah. afternoons, and we'd go out on Sunday lunchtime, just on Radio Cymru. And it was like a pick of the week. So mum could run her, run the home, do the, the jobs that paid a little bit of income for her freelancing. And, yeah. then, and then this round. And on Saturday, I, as the eldest, was taken to the studio in Bangor, the BBC studio yeah. in Bangor. And I'd sit in the studio with the headphones on, pretending I was flying or whatever um, and then for the actual recording I'd go into the uh, control room all wow. these knobs and buttons it was like little boys heaven yeah yeah uh, and they'd let me you know I was allowed I think I can't remember the red and white button I was allowed to press um, I thought oh I'd really arrived and I've loved radio ever since and when I was doing shoots, you get the people going, oh, you need to be blogging, but I don't really like writing. It reminds yeah. me of schoolwork and yeah. planning and paragraphs and, and all that yeah. nonsense. Yeah. And there's all, you know, I always felt I was the guy who got six and a half out of ten every time. Yeah. And nobody, you know, I'd get eight and a half once every 18 months. Yeah. Um, so, so that was always a struggle. Whereas this, I just talk to people I really like. And yeah. I go, go on then, tell me all about you. You know, yeah. I treat it like I would, well, I hope I treat it like I would if I were meeting you for coffee. It's a lot yeah. easier because I know you. Yeah. Not yeah. very well, obviously, but well enough to know yeah. how passionate you are, how to get the best out of you in my yeah. limited way and um no i'm loving it i'm loving it so if you know anybody else but how's um oh who's the flirty one on that group sorry i shouldn't say that um uh, linda how's linda getting on linda oh yeah yeah haven't um folks since we left um yeah but she yeah she seemed when we were sort of at graduation to be doing just the normal bubbly busy self she started a new job within the area that she's setting up the social enterprise and she was making very good contact with the social enterprise and working around to make sure household Yeah, she, she's busy doing something for Christmas Day but I keep wanting to go, right, I've got a website now. I'd love to interview her because she's so bubbly and everything yeah. but if there's yeah. no website I, it's, uh, it, and yeah. it's too local really. Well, it's not too local. Um, it's yeah. an amazing idea, but I need something more than um, yeah. than than that. Um, oh, cool! 
cool. Yeah, and is it also of um, charity? What is it? Charities you're looking for? Like it's and charities, and... social enterprises. I mean, it it can be anyone really, because mm-hmm. let's face it, most of us do it because yeah. because we want to be our own bosses. Yeah. Um. So if you know somebody who's setting up, uh, I don't know, um, a business selling, uh, or I don't know. Let's say they're renting out gambling machines. It's not much of a story. Yeah. It, it's yeah. better if there's a personal thing exactly. about yeah. it in the way that yeah. your story, um, Clara's story, uh, uh, and most people have a story. So as long as yeah. there's a story <clears throat> and as long as people can contact you, then I'm interested. Yeah. And I'm also yeah. interested just to get the practice in. Yeah. Yeah. From my because point of view. When I came on, you, was you ringing a sailboat who was in Midlands? Yeah, I, I was ringing the number that's on um, BVSC's website. Oh, is that for us? Is that for me? Well, that, it seems to show that, yeah, and it gives gives options for press one for this, press two for so-and-so. Yeah, 427-3182. Yeah, someone else said that. I need to check why that's on BBC. Because Silver Palsy is a charity we work alongside, as I said, to deliver our um, support group. Um, so I'm not sure why they've got from me. Because someone else rang there for me as well, and I was thinking, oh, they must have the details wrong. Yeah, um, and, and lots of people think BBSC is a, a reliable website, so it's yeah. a shame that's up there. Yeah, um, I'll have a look at that. Because Sarah Paul's, it might be, I was thinking, Sarah, the development manager there, it might be another person. Yeah, please, 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 please. I did one um, earlier this week with a theatre company in Oxford. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, yeah, all they do is theatre productions around Oxford, but it's a lovely story. What they do yeah. is really, you know, health-based, working with commissioning authorities, working with really high-flying professionals on their board of directors. And, and maybe in, in the months and years to come, we'll have audien, an audience that goes, oh, yeah, <clears throat> You know, you should listen to so and so about how they set up their local charity in Birmingham, helping with hospital for you, yeah. or a theatre company in Oxford. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, to, to be honest, if you're nice and you like me, then I'll like you back and I'll have you on the yeah. show. And yeah. if you yeah. know anybody who's a dab hand at social media and wants a bit of exposure, we yeah. might get sessions on. Um, bookkeeping, social media, yeah. marketing, work-life yeah. balance, yeah. stress management. I mean, just pitch me with who who people are, um, yeah. and the chances are I'll make an effort to get them on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because Sarah is one of our directors as well. Yeah. Um, well, I yeah, t- t- pitch it. Get a get her to message me or Twitter yeah. or whatever. Um, you've got my number. Um, and if we, you know, I'd be more than happy. I wouldn't want to put it out within a few weeks of your episode, yeah. but certainly, um, between now and, I don't know, April, let's have her on. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it'd be good. She's very much a, a sort of stories around her sister being born with cerebral palsy. Right. And kind of having to grow up as, as that sibling. Yeah, th- th- then I definitely so, want to, because it, yeah. it's also a local charity. It's not, the fa- the marketing director of I don't know the NSPCC. Yeah. There's no yeah. you know hey come on love you you know you've um you work for one of the biggest in the world you do you don't need my podcast. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd want you yeah. if you're the founder, but then a founder of a massive charity isn't going to come on a on a show like mine until I've got a track record. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. I love it. I think it. it, it it, it's so simple but so brilliant all yeah. the time. How does that make sense? Just a simple idea. Just a simple yeah. idea. Just having yeah. a chat and recording it. Yeah, that makes such a difference. And like I say, all the different um, avenues you can explore and getting sort of your experts on as such and getting them to talk about a particular area. And, yeah. 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 Um, well, because I asked Clara about it, I didn't want to ask you too much about it. But you know, we'd have somebody on about action learning and the School of Social Enterprise. So if, you know, yeah. I'd love it if Justice Care, 
uh, what's yeah. the, justice came on and said, hey, school of Southern Jones, by da 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 da. This is how you get on. What are the top tips? Da 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 da. Yeah. Um, anything like that um, would yeah. be good. We might get um, I've j- the idea just popped into my head now. We might have an episode of. Um, how to uh, make the best of your application to School yeah. of Social Enterprise and Unlimited um, yeah. and get your top tips or whatever. So um, that's yeah, an you idea. Yeah, you can have a few of us doing different tips at a time. So Clara, for example, giving a tip, I'm getting given a tip just to, you know, and people sort of saying what, you know, what worked for them and yeah. what their top tip is, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, so am I. Now you've given me an idea. See, that's, that's the other thing. It, it, it's a, oh, it, it's a couple of years ago now. My brother's an actor, and I have a distant cousin who's an actor. And they were chatting away, chatting away. And in the end, they said, um, and in the conversation, I heard one of them say, actually, that's all actors want to do is talk to other actors about acting. And I feel the same about entrepreneurs and, and people doing our sort of thing. We we just get a buzz out of talking to others and listening to their stories. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good or good? All right, well, have a lovely Merry Christmas. And you, lovely and Merry you. Christmas. All and the best to the Austin. boys and Kevin. Yeah, we'll do more to meet up in the new year. Yeah, yeah. All right. Take care. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.